Hello everyone. So in this tutorial here, I'm going to show you a few of the blending tools that I use in my project every day to create the different effects that I'm after. So this could be techniques and blending that I need to do for specific fur types. Um, for on my Patreon channel, I really do focus on a lot of the different textures of the fur so that Patreon members, if they are taking pet portrait commissions, are able to potentially um, tackle any kind of fur type. I do have other full uh, tutorials here, like this ginger cat. This was featured in December. So depending on the type of fur or the animal that I'm drawing, it might require a slightly different blending technique. And there are many tools that we can use to get the desired effect that we're after. As you can see here, we've got some like the cotton buds that we often have um, just lying around the house. It doesn't have to be things like the soft tools here where you have to go and buy them online. They are fairly expensive. So it's nice to have a few of the other alternatives that are not only a bit cheaper, but as I say, the convenience that we might sometimes have these lying around the house. So this video is going to focus on, there's eight tools in total, and we're going to focus on how to use those to create the lovely desired blending techniques that we like to use for our pastel portraits. Okay, so first up is, I think one of the ones that we use quite frequently, and that's blending with our finger. Now, I do certainly use this blending technique more so when I've just done a project using the pastel pencils on their own. It isn't as um, precise in some cases compared to if we were using a blending stump or maybe the soft tools with the slightly uh, sharper point to it, but it can work certainly for really pushing in the pastel for your very first base layer. So what I'll do is I'll just start off here with a nice blue and I'm just going to show you the technique that I use because what I don't want to be doing is smudging all of that pigment everywhere. I still want to make sure that my base layer is very structured. I want to make sure that I'm paying really close attention to that reference photo even at the beginning stages. And this is something that I talk about an awful lot on all of my YouTube videos and in depth on my Patreon tutorials. So what I like to do is I don't like to blend and scribble, almost like scribbling motions with my finger. I'm still being really careful to go in smaller, more precise movements to make sure that I am not shifting that colour too much. Now if you're working on a pet portrait and you've got more of those browner base layers, it's not as important. But when you've got colours here, let's say for instance you were working on a black and white dog, let's say a Dalmatian for instance. You don't necessarily want to blend those spots all the way into the white fur and create this cross contamination that you can see here. A lot of this red is going over onto the blue. So in some instances, you've got your other blending methods and the tools, which I'll show you coming up, which would be better suited for something like that. Whereas as you can see here, blending with your finger can create quite a bit of that contamination between the two colors. Now, as I say, if you are working on maybe something like a lion where it's all pretty similar in colour for your base layer, this technique would work really well. So depending on the scale as well that I like to work on, the smaller the project, if I am using just my pastel pencils for my base layer, I will usually just blend and push the pigment in the base layer of the paper with my finger. So you can see, you can create a nice soft edge. You can blend that even more with more pressure applied on the finger there but you will create more of that contamination between the two. So it's just something to be aware of, but as you can see here, it does work perfectly well. You're gonna be a little bit more restricted with how soft you're gonna get the edges when you're blending in for your base layer. And the reason being, this is slightly textured paper, so you wanna be a little bit careful, obviously, of the end of your finger, but also there are better suited tools that you could use to really fade out this edge far more effectively than rather than, than using your finger. Now one tip quickly about blending with your finger, when I've done my base layer and then I'm doing my layer of refinement, which I speak about on my tutorials here on YouTube, I then always blend that layer on top of my base layer in the direction that the fur is traveling in. Now the reason for that, it does make a difference and it already starts to help to create that base layer flowing in the direction that your details are gonna to start to travel in when you're working on the fur. 
So that's something that I find does make a difference with the blending. So for your very first base layer, you can do more round circular movements, but certainly when I'm working on the fur itself, I do like to push that pigment into the paper in the direction that the fur is traveling in. Okay, so that brings me on to method two, and that's your soft tools. So here are the three of the ones that I bought to start with. Now my preference is starting to use the round shaped ones like these two. I do have the triangular shaped ones, but I don't like using them for a couple of reasons. One, I find that when I am blending with these, this sponge can easily ping off and it can then put a mark of pastel somewhere on your portrait that you do not want. Another thing as well, when you are blending with this, because it's got more of those sharp edges and those straighter points to it, that you can end up with harsher stop and start points on your blending layer, which is not what we want. We want our blending to be nice and smooth and soft. So for me, I don't find that these tools here are my go-to. Now, another reason why I don't like this is this sponge, as you can see, is all the way on this applicator. However, the end of it does not feel the, the uh, sort of the plastic point here on the end. So for me, when I am blending, this has a mind of its own. This can end up not being as precise as you would like and therefore this I find I have a lot more control. You can see here the end of this sponge does not move and that's because the applicator inside goes all the way to the end of this sponge. So for that reason these two are my favourite but this is what I use for 90% of the time. It's that much smaller, I can be that much more accurate. So this is what they call as their oval shape. So I'll do exactly the same process. Now one thing I will mention as well, the soft tools do these sponges. I don't actually use these because I like working in smaller areas, but these would be very good for backgrounds for your pan pastels. I do still think that this would be my, my preference and I do use this for my backgrounds as well, just because I can hold it a little bit more like a pencil and have a little bit more control. Now they also do the eye makeup applicator shape ones. I don't use these actually much anymore, I save these more for my graphite because it's a smoother paper. I find that these sponges can get damaged quite quickly in comparison to the oval shaped ones that I showed you with the blue handle. So what I do is I buy my eye makeup applicators online, you can buy them you know, in packs of 50 sometimes, and although I have tried a couple of brands, there are a couple that do certainly match up to the uh, soft tools here. So this is my preference, they are so much cheaper and they might fractionally be, you know, burn out a little bit quicker than these but it is very, very minimal. So for what these cost and the quantity I can get them at at that price, this is my preference rather than these. But as I say, for large areas and my backgrounds, this here by Softool is exactly what I use. So I will now just do exactly the same, so we'll put some of the blue down. And when I'm working with the soft tools, with my pan pastels, obviously I'm not having to blend in this way, I'm picking up the pigment with my pan pastels and applying it to the paper. So that blending would be slightly different. But if I was just working with the pencils here and I needed my base layer to be nice and blended, what I would do is I would use more towards the, the top third of the sponge and I'll go in round, small, circular movements, holding the soft tool, as you can see, right at the end, and that will help to keep the pressure off of that soft tool, help to create even nice, smoother blending. And this does enable you to blend a lot more accurately. You can see here that although it's blending in the middle, I'm able to keep that color nice and pure on both sides unlike this area here. This has got more of that purpler colour where the red and the blue have mixed together. So this here really does create a really nice blended effect. As long as you're gentle, you're not going to affect the sponges. They will, they will damage over time, so you will need to replace them every now and then. And something as well that's really beneficial is have a bit of kitchen paper or a rag to the side so that when you are doing colour changes, you can wipe off lightly to get the colour off of here so that you're not contaminating other areas of your portrait and putting colour where you don't want it. Now another thing as well, these sponges work really nicely for blending the outer edge. As you can see here, I'm putting hardly any pressure at all on this applicator. I'm not clenching my fingers. 
and this is really helping to smudge that pigment all the way out into the paper. So these are definitely my go-to. These and the eye makeup applicators are what I use a lot of the time for my very first base layer, especially when I'm using the pan pastels, as I've said. Now something that I'll quickly mention, when you are working with pan pastels and you're using the applicators to apply that pigment to the paper, it's very easy to fill the tooth of the paper very quickly and what that means is you're not going to be able to add your details on top. I do have a video here on YouTube and I've got quite a few in-depth versions on my Patreon channel showing you how to apply the pan pastel pigment to your paper to avoid filling the tooth um, at all. So that will mean that you can apply endless layers on top if you are using your pastel mat. And a tip that I like to use is I've got a container with all of my spare sponges in and what I like to do, as you can see here, is I have got more of these sponges allocated for specific colours and that means that I'm not sort of worrying about contaminating, let's say I've got a nice blue sky and I'm then working on maybe um, a, a dog in the foreground that's a really dark colour. I've kept these sponges for the dog for instance and then these ones can be for my sky so that I know I've got my separate sponges for my blues, my greens, my browns and so on and then I can switch between those sponges according to the colour. It's just one thing that I like to do to try and make sure that my sponges last as long as they, sh they possibly can and also that I do not cross contaminate any part of my colour on my portrait. So what I'll do is I will just quickly do the exact same method here and I'll just use that eye makeup applicator that I showed a few minutes ago so that you can compare the difference and just see how similar they are. Now these sponges for the eye makeup applicators, especially the ones here that I use, they are a little bit firmer. So in some cases you can blend this still but end up with a more of a harsher line. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You might have a ginger cat and you have some of the stripes where you don't want it to be completely blended like this area or the outer surface here. You might only want these markings to be just a little bit softened. So these applicators here, although I have used them because they are cheaper, I also like them because you can get a slightly different blending technique. It is more, a little bit more precise because it's ever so slightly more of a firmer sponge it's going to vary considerably depending on how much pressure you're putting on these applicators though but I will just blend this outer edge as well and you can see that it is very very similar also this sponge it's not damaged it they do last almost very very similar to the soft sponges but the results are almost identical so it's something that I do like to have as a backup now I have experimented with a few eye makeup applicators though until I found the one that I liked because there are some out there and they do just disintegrate. So if you have found that you have tried them and you don't like them, I would recommend just buying a couple of different brands. This one's got an orange surface on one side and a white surface on the other um, and you can get them very cheap online. So yeah, I just wanted to show you the comparison there. Okay, so on to number three and that's just using the pencils themselves. So what I like to do is when I'm working on smaller projects, I will use the pastel pencils for my base layer so that I can be accurate right from the very beginning. So I do then use the pencils in many cases to blend those layers together. You can then help to create more unique colours as well. For instance here, the blue and the red, I would end up getting some kind of purple. But what I would do is there is a technique to it. So I've got the two colours here as I have done for the rest. But what I would be doing is using the pencils and overlapping in the middle on this where the two colours meet by two or three millimetres. But in order to get this kind of blending, it's all in the pressure and the technique of holding the pencil. So I'm holding it towards the end of the barrel and I'm only applying very light pressure. If I was to be using the back of my hand here, you wouldn't be able to see any indentation. And that is the sort of pressure that I'm applying here. I'm not blending it like this because what that will do is just end up transferring the colour that you're trying to blend with far too pigmented onto that paper and you're just going to end up putting more of that colour on the surface. So you want small circular movements, very light pressure and you want to overlap that border where the two colours meet as I say by about two or three millimetres and this will help to create that nice blended look. Now, depending on how soft you want it, I could carry on adding more of this blue over to the red. 
for some base layers you want it to be particularly soft just like with the soft tool applicators if I wanted this two here to be even more blended I would just have to carry on going over both of the colours to help create even more of that transition almost more like a rainbow effect where the colours are a lot more gradual but you can see here this creates a beautifully soft effect this is one of my favourite techniques and you could then just add more of the red to go back on top if you wanted to add even more colour. It's just one of those ones where it's a little bit of trial and error, but certainly light pressure, small round movements, holding always at the end of the pencil. Because if you end up trying to blend and hold the pencil too close to the lead, you'll end up putting far too much pressure on this pencil and you'll just end up creating small blue circular pencil strokes. So you want to hold it towards the end use slightly more of the side of the pencil and that will help to get that nice soft transition between the two. Okay so that brings me on to number four and that is your blending stumps. Now these are also called paper stumps, they've got a couple of different names and you can buy various brands. So I do certainly think my preference would be the Derwent. You can get one where they're made with rice paper just like this one is here and it is a little softer. So when you move them and you put a bit of pressure on this, there's a little bit more of that pliable feeling, it's a little bit softer. Compared to these ones here, you can't move these at all, so these are a lot firmer. Now there are a couple of things that I like to do when I use these. Now I use these an awful lot for my graphite portraits, but I don't use them as much for my pastel work. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Now I do like the smaller ones in terms of if I was let's say working around an eye and I had to blend some of the lower eyelid to create a nice softer edge, these would be one of the ones that would work really well for that, especially because you can buy them in these different sizes, you can be a lot more precise and accurate. If you compared this obviously to the size of the soft tool, you're potentially going to completely blend out all of that section of the lower eye, whereas with this you can be very precise. So they do have their benefits. Now the one thing that I would say though is I would recommend using these for pushing the pastel in for your very first base layer. If you then try and use them when you've been building your layers, even another layer on top of your base layer, so that you've just got your two layers, the one thing that I have found is it will start to shift that pastel pigment around rather than blend it. But it does certainly work for pushing that pastel into the paper for your base layer. Now these are perfect for the base layer if you are someone who don't like touching the pastels with your fingers. This here would certainly therefore be one of my go-to blending techniques. So what I'll do is exactly the same. So let's put some blue down. And I can then put some of the red next to it. And I'm going to go with one of my worn ones. Now the reason being here, this is a brand new one out of the packet and it's very pointed and it's very firm at the end, it's very hard. So what I would do here is for something like this, I'd get a bit of fine grit sandpaper, like a 320 grit. And what I would do is just lightly sand off the very tip, use more of the side of it and just roll it on the sandpaper to help create a bit more of a fuzzier point like what this one's got. The reason be being, this won't blend quite in the same way as smoothly as what this one would because it's a little bit worn. So these work better in this case. So I'll do small circular movements. One of the reasons why these are so popular as well is they're very comfortable to use. So you can use them just how you would hold your pencil. You can be very accurate with your blending. As you can see here, they really do work however can you see that the pastel is lifting off of the surface it's got these little sort of pastel balls here now the reason i that's one of the reasons why i don't like using these as much because i find it's just shifts some of the pastel around now if you are using them for your base layer, that is no big deal really it's just something that i it, it frustrates me a little bit so it's just something that i'm in a tendency that i use my little air puffer tool here to blow that off of the surface. Now a quick tip as well with these is just like with the soft tools when you are doing a colour change make sure that you wipe off the end of these on a clean bit of rag because you don't want to then contaminate and spread colour where you don't want it. 
so that's something that can happen with these and if you don't get into the habit of wiping them off it's very frustrating when you accidentally put a darker color onto a lighter area so one other mention as well some people say that you can sharpen these to get a, a better point and to get a clean point I do find though that once you've sharpened them they don't work in the same way and because of how cheap they are you can buy like a pack of five for a couple of pounds I just prefer to get a, a new one however I never throw mine away so I'll show you the ones quickly that I've got here and these are the ones that I use for graphite I have had these for the best part of probably five six years and they're the ones that I bought right from the very beginning because the more worn they are the better they work so yeah that is the, the the blending stumps there and as you can see come in many many brands and they do certainly have their place but i would recommend using them for pushing the pastel in for your very first base layer after that i find that they do just shift that pastel around as you saw from the little clumps of the pastel that were forming in the middle but they work really well just blend out the edge here so you can see just how well they can push that pigment into the paper you can put a bit more pressure here just like what I am doing at the moment easing off the pressure to get a bit more of that faded effect on the outer edge so they really can create something very similar to the soft tools okay so number five and that is the color shaper now these I think are a little bit underrated now the reason being I found from a bit of trial and error that they only work in specific instances. They certainly don't work with minimal pigment on the paper. So I do like using them more for my multiple layers. Once I've started adding my refinement layer, these work actually really well, but they really do not like working with pan pastels. Now I do have a dedicated video on Patreon showing this using a swatch and also on my elephant tutorial because I found using these for elephant skin and creating that fine detailing and the blending within the wrinkles was perfect. I didn't get that result with any other blending method apart from these. So if that's of interest, I'll link my Patreon channel in the description below. So for these, I'll, I'll show you as I'm working on them. So I'll do exactly the same as what I have done. I'll put some of that blue down. Some of the red now these color shapers they can come in different sizes and different shapes as well the ones that I've got here are just the rounds and that's just so that I can then obviously get a bit more of that finer point for tiny detail so if I had a highlight in the eye but I needed it to be a little bit more of that glazy transparent look to it and it was very small detail these work really well for really softening out those very tiny edges so I do find these have their place but they can be quite frustrating to use if you don't have the correct base layers in place to start with. So I'll show you what I mean. So here we've got a very minimal pigment. There's just two colours, one layer of each as you saw. And I'll hold it in the same way, slightly to the side. Small circular movements. Not holding it close onto the silver bit, just like what I said with the pencils. But you can see that the results are not as soft and blended as the others it's a lot more harder to get those more of that transition between the two colors and what i'll do is i'll just clean off the tip there and i'll just show you how it doesn't really work it it does it sort of but it's nowhere near as soft as what you would like i certainly wouldn't be recommending these for any kind of backgrounds or larger areas i do just use these more for my smaller details but what i'll do is and this is something that i found i'll put another layer here on top which you don't have to do with as you've seen with the other options but this would be let's say my layer of refinement that I'm working on top which I do with all of my portraits and then I'll just repeat the same process and because it's got a little bit more pigment to grip to you're able to create that softer transition you're able to be a lot more precise with this as well because it's got an even finer point than your blending stumps so these do really have their place but as you can see it does help to create that softer transition in the middle but it needs additional layers in order to do so 
So the, this is a blending tool where you could use this more for your finer layers and softening out those subtle details because not all details need to be sharp and crisp. And this certainly is where I would be using this applicator for that. And as I say, they do come in different shapes as well. This is just my preference, just so I can be very, very precise with it. But they really do work. And the more layers you add with these, the, the better they do blend. So if you're working on, let's say, an eye, and you do want part of the iris to be lovely and soft and blended, just carry on layering as you would each additional layer that you add and then trying to soften those details out even more to create more of that depth. They work beautifully. So that is the, the colour shaper, very precise. The rounds are my favourite, but any other, you can, they can think they do a knife point as well, one where it's got more of that uh, sh sort of like two shorter sides on it. So they both have their, their place, but these are my preference. I use them a lot for those kinds of smaller details. But if you have struggled with using them before and they haven't really done much, it's probably because you don't have enough pastel on your paper to start with. So on to number six, and this is the paint brushes or your makeup brushes. Now these are different to the eye makeup applicators. You can see here they, do, they are more of that brush, but they do have their place. Now for me, I don't use these for blending out my base layers. I find that they do shift the pastel around even considerably more than the blending stumps so I don't use them for that but I wanted to include them in this video because I do use them to soften out my details and create a slightly blended effect but it isn't to the same degree as what these create however if you wanted to use a brush you can get these results so I'll do exactly the same so put some of the blue down now for the paint brushes I'll show you a bit closer the one that I like to use. It's so old, it doesn't have a brand name at all. You can see how worn it is here. And I like using the flat shaped brush. It's got that square point to it. And this is a really nice soft bristle brush. So you can see I've got quite a lot of movement there. It's not rigid. And that's gonna allow for me to get a nice softer look to my, brush stro to my um, blending strokes. So what I would do is exactly the same method. I don't wanna be holding it too close to the bristles. And I'm gonna go in smaller movements to start with. You can see that it does lift up some of the pastel, which is why I don't like using it for the base layer. But you can then use them going in a slightly different direction to help to create that transition. But it's a bit harder to be as precise. So it's a bit more messier. You can see here that I've got some of this colour lifted up onto the top. It does blend out the edges and I do use the brush here in some cases where I'm doing a head and shoulder pet portrait where I want the chest to be nice and faded. I have used the paintbrush for the bottom section because you can see here it does help to create a really soft edge. So that is one of the cases where I have used this brush here you can see it really can help to push some of this pigment out to the side. One thing though and a tip that is quite useful is when you are working with a flat brush for this you don't want to have start and stop points so it's a really good habit to get into to not do this movement when you're blending. Try and pull this brush in the direction that the fur is flowing in to avoid these brush start and stop points. So these work really well for softening out your details. That's when I use the paintbrush rather than this method, but you can use it if you have them and you want to try and get a desired effect. And for the same with the makeup brushes here, these are the Eco Tools. I just bought some online. I haven't overly experimented with them, but if you were trying to do a background and create a softer effect with that, I have seen other people use makeup brushes like this to blend larger areas. Now obviously you can get considerably larger brushes than this. I don't like working with anything too large because I find that you can get a bit um, sort of not, not rushed, but you can have a tendency to try and blend too much too quickly. So with this, what I would be doing is slightly different technique. So I'd hold it a little bit more upright and I'd certainly go more rounder movements. And when you're trying to blend a background, you're gonna want 
more of a soft edge rather than what we've been trying to create with these swatches so you want to then be trying to move that pigment around you can see how much it is shifting that pastel and that's going to really help to blend the two together now these bristles here are very very soft obviously being that they're for um, putting makeup on your face they are meant to be that soft but you can create a very very soft effect it's not my preference I do like using the soft tools for my backgrounds because one thing that you'll see here it's actually lifted an awful lot of the red off of the paper if you compare what the edge here looks like compared to where the soft tool was this looks far less vibrant compared to the soft tools and that's because this is just pushing and pulling all of this pigment off of the surface of the paper so these are certainly my preference more than the makeup brushes but they are certainly worth a try and I'm sure if you want a specific desired effect these could potentially come in in use and, and be very handy so that brings me on to number seven and that is the cotton bud now these are really handy for blending because we have these lying around the house but just like with the other methods I do still have my preferences now this one here would be the one that I would be using for blending I don't use cotton buds myself mainly because I do like using the soft tools and the eye makeup applicators most of the time but these are really handy to use now these this one here in the middle you can see it's got the fibers that are sticking out the top and it's a lot sort of softer and fluffier looking compared to this one you can't see the movement here when I'm touching it compared to this one this would just end up picking the pastel up onto the end of the cotton bud and you wouldn't get the same amount of blending another thing you will find is these fibers because the pastel mat's got that slight tooth to it these fibers will stick to the paper so I would be putting that one in the bin so when you've got a pot of your cotton buds don't be tempted to use these ones I wouldn't even bother with that at all stick to these ones here now this one is used for young children and they would work perfectly fine the only reason why I don't is because when you are blending I have tried this myself and I've accidentally blended a part of the portrait where the larger surface touched the drawing which I didn't realize at the time and obviously you're then ending up blending in parts of your portrait which you're not intending to do so this would be my preference the ones where the fibers are not loose and it's got more of that firmer feel to it so we will do the same here And the good thing about the cotton bud is you can obviously move and turn these around to always use more of a cleaner surface so they are convenient for that now i want to use the same technique that i have done throughout so small round movements and it really does create a lovely soft blended area that transition there is really nice and smooth there's not a huge amount of pigment that's been picked up you can rotate that and use a clean surface these work really well and you can see as well there isn't that shift in the pastel so there is none of this pastel that's being moved like what the blending stump did so these I find actually work better than the blending stump for blending the base layer here you don't have any of that pastel fall off either at the bottom so I'll just use the opposite side here and I'll just show you how this can blend now this is a prime example so this one here feels softer a bit looser it's not like it's gripped all the way to the end of the stick here so when I'm using this to blend it's not doing it in the same way so if I go back here to the opposite side and try and do the same movement and the same blending technique I'm getting a much better result so it really is going to depend on the cotton bud that you are using as to how well these are going to blend and you will just get a feel for it as soon as I used this one I could feel that it wasn't going to blend in the same you can see that some of these fibers are already starting to be a bit loose so it wasn't able to grip the paper in the same way but because of how cheap we can buy these it, that doesn't really matter just end up picking a, a different one but these here create such a nice soft blended transition into the paper these do work really well to be honest I don't know why I don't use these more in my work now that I've done this here I probably will do now but these work beautifully if not even softer really than the soft tool so if you compare the difference there so these work really well but there are a few things here that I would be making sure that I was using more of that firmer point compared to something like this and that's just on the same cotton bud 
so you really can get quite a lot of um, different blending techniques depending on the texture and how firm that cotton is on the end of the, the bud there. Now something I will also just mention about these is once you've used them and you can feel that the texture of the pastel mat is starting to make the cotton bud a bit damaged just like what this one is here to start with put it in the bin and and grab a new one because as I said you won't get the same blending technique. When you are also switching between your light and darker areas just like with the blending stumps and the soft tools be sure to either use a clean part of the cotton bud or get a new one so you don't have any cross contamination between your colours. Okay so on to number eight and the final blending method and that's just with normal tissue. So what I've done is just taken one square here I've folded it in half and then I usually like to fold it in half again so that it's a bit more of a manageable size. Now what I started to do is do the blend in here and, and showing you that and then I realised that my camcorder wasn't recording. Very frustrating so I'm just going to repeat the same process. So I've just started off with the blue and the red as before and what I like to do here is fold this in half so that I can start to get a little bit more of a point to it. You'll find that how you like to fold it in terms of how you can then be comfortable holding it and then blending it in those small circular movements so as long as you've just got it folded to more of that point here that you know there is no right or wrong way to do it the one thing that i would say though just like with the cotton bud is not to put too much pressure on the the tissue because you don't want to damage this surface and start to expose more of those fibers because you'll have the same problem here with it not blending and gripping to the paper in the same way you don't have as much of the pastel fall off like what you did with the blending stump. It's a little bit more fiddlier to hold obviously compared to that cotton bud but what it does enable you to do is one square will last you a you know quite a long time because you're able to just keep on turning that over and using a clean point. Now the good thing about this as well is you can then take it to the next level of blending and use more larger circular movements to help create more of that softer transition now this is just what i've done for this one here but if you compare this one to the i the the makeup brush here it doesn't remove quite as much of that red pigment but also it's not got more it's got more of that softer transition so this one here you can still see a little bit more of that firmer line in the middle you don't really have that here so this i do find is more better for blending large areas compared to the makeup brush. I think the makeup brush does just shift that pastel about rather than blend it into that paper. So I'll get a clean, another point to it here and I'll just show you how we can then blend this out on the outer edge. Now I find that this blending isn't as smooth or effective compared to the cotton bud here. I am having to apply more pressure to this tissue in order to get anywhere near the same amount of blending and it isn't as soft so for this kind of blending here the cotton bud would be my preference rather than the tissue but for larger areas this works really well now the one thing as well comparing the tissue to the cotton bud is you don't have to fight with that inconsistency of which end of the cotton bud to use bearing in mind which one is going to be a little bit softer or firmer so because the tissue is going to be the same consistency on each sheet it's going to vary depending on the brand that you buy but the the consistency is going to be the same you're not going to have that issue of trying to always find the right cotton bud so again the, the tissue there would be would have more of those pros to it rather than the cotton bud but in terms of the blending and the precision that you get the cotton bud would be my go-to so i really hope this tutorial and this little video here was of use showing you the different blending methods that i like to use more so than others, as I've said, my preference is the soft tools, the eye makeup applicators. However, by using this swatch here, I do think I'm gonna be using the cotton buds a lot more in my work. This has surprised me. It didn't shift that pastel round like what the blending stump did. So I do think I'm gonna be getting a couple of these, the, the pots here, so that I can use these more in my, my pastel work and certainly more in my tutorials. So if this video was of use, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content and the videos that I upload here to YouTube, hit the subscribe and the bell button. 
and I'll be uploading another video now in the the new year probably I might squeeze one in between um, Christmas and New Year if I can and that will probably be on how to blend with acrylics so something very similar but just with my acrylics um, and yeah I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and if I don't get that video uploaded before then I'll certainly get it done for the new year